One of the closest finishes in NASCAR history. Plus, will we get to see Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the number 88 for more races? And what does the CW broadcasting the final eight races of 2024 actually mean? Hi, hi, hi. Push it, push it, push it, push it. Check your bike. Hell yeah! Woo! One hell of a job, man. One hell of a job. Woo! Yeah! Fanny Series champion right here. Nice work, boss. Hell yeah! That's awesome. Let's drink the beer. What do you think, Cole? I'm ready. Oh, yeah. Very busy week in motorsports, but a very fun week. Welcome on back into the Pit Pass, your personal pass for everything in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. I'm Alan Bailey. Lots to talk about today. Sam Mayer getting the victory over Ryan Sieg out there in Texas in a marvelous, marvelous photo finish. We will go ahead and break it all down. Before we do, though, make sure that you mash that subscribe button so that you do not miss a video. And of course, log on to ARNRace.com for the latest motorsports news. ARN, the Motorsports Authority. No time like the present, man. Ooh, Sam Mayer. Oh, that was such a good finish. Like, I think that's finish of the year contender right there. And a lot of you were saying, no, Atlanta was better. I respectfully, respectfully, highly disagree. I think this is fin finish of the year contender right here. Because these guys were tracking each other down for the last 10 laps or so. We saw this finish coming from a mile away. And, oh, by the way... They were in it. They were both loose. They were beating and banging, slamming on each other. The Atlanta Cup Series finish, the three-wide photo finish, yeah, it was nice. However, they were three-wide, I mean, flat out for the last, what, two, three laps, and we all kind of saw it coming. I mean, it was, it was there, and they were just mashing it down. They had no real control. It was, okay, is this car going to grip up? Is it going to get the get the suck and get the side force off uh, I don't know it, it kind of took it out of the driver's hands this Texas finish though that we saw on Saturday was phenomenal because it was so much in the driver's hands it was so much in their control for that reason alone I say this is finish of the year contender seriously better than that three wide Atlanta finish I'm just saying come after me in the comments if you want but I really enjoyed this finish and I enjoyed Atlanta too I'm not dissing Atlanta I'm not saying the Atlanta finish wasn't good I'm just saying I personally preferred this finish better. And did Ryan Sieg screw up? Maybe. I, maybe, maybe. He screwed up one and two. There's no question about that. And if he doesn't screw up one and two on that last lap, then maybe Mayer doesn't get to him. Maybe we don't see this side-by-side -side photo finish. Maybe we do. Uh, it's kind of up for debate. But if I'm Ryan Sieg, I'm, I'm turning that one car. I'm doing everything I can to get back to the line first. And he was beating and banging him, ran him up into the wall. Yes, but, oh, this one's going to haunt Ryan. And I feel bad for the guy, man. I mean, Ryan Sieg's chances of winning a race are few and far between. No offense to him. And I would have loved to have seen him get this one. But it doesn't work that way necessarily all the time, unfortunately. And I, I hate it. I really, really hate it. But... You know, I'll go ahead and wreck somebody and turn them sideways and be standing in victory lane with my trophy going, yeah, I hate that I did it that way, but, you know, I, I won. <laughs> and Ryan Sieg, unfortunately, doesn't get the victory. That just plain out sucks. Looking at some of the finishers, you had Jesse Love coming home with a ninth place finish. Uh, fifth in the point standings, 76 points back. I'm going to continue to keep an eye on this kid because I really do think he's going to be up in the Cup Series uh, seriously contending for victory sooner than we want to think or admit. And for now, yes, he probably did jump up into the Xfinity series pretty damn quick, but rattles off another top 10, fifth in the point standings. That cannot be ignored. That a boy to Mr. Josh Williams. A 12th place finish out in Texas moves up to 20th in the points, 218 points out of the points lead. This is the guy that I sincerely didn't think deserved this ride. He's proven me wrong. I am very, very happy to be proven wrong in this aspect. Way to go, Josh. Sincerely, I'd love to see him rattle off a victory at some point this season. I think he's more than capable. I think the team is more than capable. It's just, you know, can they put all those puzzle pieces together and put together a really strong run? We're going to have to wait and find out. And of course, Chandler Smith, who I believe is taking over the 19 car next season, if not the following year, coming home 15th in his Toyota for Joe Gibbs Racing. Uh, only a 19-point lead right now, but with a couple of victories, it doesn't really matter because the points reset. But still, uh, kind of a so-so, not great characteristic run for this team. Interesting, interesting race out there for them. 
And the reason most of you have clicked on this video, SVG Shane Van Gisbergen in the number 97, coming home 18th out at Texas, moves to 15th in the point standings, 158 markers back. This guy's going in the wrong direction. He didn't have a good run out there, and is the SVG hype dying down? I don't think so. You're going to run into those races inevitably that have, uh, you know, a bad weekend here or there for SVG. And this is one of those not great weekends. Not a bad weekend, not a good weekend, just a meh, we were there, it's over, let's move on kind of weekends. Uh, I don't know. We're going to see what he does when he gets to Talladega this weekend. That should be very fascinating for me. And to finish things off here, uh, Haley Deegan in the number 15 coming home 23rd, 26 in the point standings, 243 markers out. This is the little race team that could with a rookie driver and they're struggling and there's no surprise, there's no shock that Ford is off right now uh, in the Cup Series and in the Xfinity Series. They're just missing a little something. I think Ford being off right now, Haley Deegan being a rookie, this organization being a rookie, this organization being a little, I don't want to say underfunded because I think that they're pretty decently funded, but they don't necessarily have the support from Ford that they were promised last year and I think that that's hurting them. Will we see Dale Earnhardt Jr. in some more NASCAR Xfinity Series races? God, I hope so. I would love to see Jr. in some more short track races. But Jr. said, he came out this week and talked to NBC, big surprise, that he wants to see more short track racers in the number 88. You just had uh, Bubba Pollard and you had Carson Quaffle making their series debuts, both with very impressive top 10 runs, very impressive top 10 runs in that number 88 for Jr. Motorsports. Yeah, I'd like to see some more local short track guys getting a shot, and hopefully that number 88 can essentially turn into the local short track star car. That'd be very, very cool to see. But I'd like to see Dale Earnhardt Jr. make a start or two in that car as well. We know he's going to be racing out at Bristol, which is really awesome. Can't wait to see it. Just get him a fire extinguisher so that he can actually finish the race out. But I just, I, I want to see Jr., on track more and maybe that's just the nostalgia fan in me but you know what there's nothing wrong with seeing a uh, nascar hall of famer tearing it up in the series that he won two titles in i'm just saying now this story definitely raised some eyebrows last week and it literally came out like an hour after we put up our episode or so give or take and that pissed me off a lot but let's go ahead and talk about the cw network broadcasting the final eight NASCAR Xfinity Series races in 2024. What brought this about? What necessarily was the cause and effect for this? Well, apparently NBC doesn't want to broadcast those final eight races for whatever reason. They want to focus on more college sports and they have other priorities. That in and of itself is alarming for NASCAR fans. It should be alarming for NASCAR fans and people over at NASCAR. It means essentially that this... Uh, partner that just signed on for an extension does not want your product on their air. That is not good. Essentially, NBC said, yeah, that thing that we just bought for a boatload of money, we want it, but uh, we'll go ahead and get rid of some of these races. And it's just the Xfinity series. It's not like they're farming out cup races, but it's still pretty damn alarming. And uh, another component to this is the fact that NBC is going to continue to produce these final eight races. It's going to be Rick Allen. It's going to be Steve Letarte. It's going to be Jeff Burton in the booth. And these are the guys that are going to be calling the races. It's just going to be on the CW instead of NBC or whatever network NBC farms this out to. And and it's a good business decision because CW really wants to jump into the NASCAR Xfinity Series business as soon as possible. And they are effectively with this. They're jumping in eight races early. They take over the series starting in 2024 for every single race, which is really cool. And I really like the fact that one network is going to have this series for the entire season. That's extremely cool. It means that fans won't have to jump around from channel to channel trying to find where this race is. It's going to be on one channel. And if you you have rabbit ears if you have a digital receiver uh, in your TV you will be able to get this for free and more specifically if you don't have rabbit ears and you know you're living in 2024 2025 you can go ahead and download the CW app for free onto your smartphone your smart device your smart TV your tablet wherever you watch things and you will be able to watch every single NASCAR Xfinity series race for free that is awesome. This is what I've been harping on, and this is what I've wanted to see for so damn long. And NASCAR fans as a whole really, really, really need to get behind this because effectively, 
you are putting the most, po not the most popular, but frankly, the best racing product that NASCAR's top three series has to offer right now with some of the best drivers that NASCAR has to offer right now on a single network streaming for free worldwide. That is really, really, really important. And I think we're getting to the point where the CW could overtake potentially in the future the Cup Series ratings. I know that that's a big stretch. That's a big leap. There's significantly more people that watch the NASCAR Cup Series race. Uh, but I do think that we're moving in that general direction. And will we be able to see that? We'll have to wait to see, but I really think that putting this series in front of the most possible people on a network that most people get for free, that everybody gets for free here in the United States, but can also watch on a stream for free is only going to be good for the sport. NBC doesn't want it. That's fine. But starting at Bristol on September 20th, we're going to be able to watch every single NASCAR Xfinity Series race on the CW. And that is extremely important for the future of this series and the sport of NASCAR, period. Now, before we close out the program, let's go ahead and check out the comments down below. You can go ahead and drop your hot takes right now in the comments down below for a shot for them to end up on the show. Let's go ahead and start with this comment. Atlanta was a better finish, but this finish was more unlikely. The Texas configuration producing this finish is something I wasn't expecting. Even as a junior motorsports fan, I felt bad for Sieg. Hopefully, Sieg wins a race. I agree with you. I, I did not expect this photo finish. I really didn't. We expected it at Atlanta. We expected it at Daytona, Talladega. Those are uh, restricted uh, tracks, and that group pack racing produces these types of finishes. I never thought we would see it at, te at Texas, honestly. This was a massive shock, but it was so damn cool. And for that reason alone, I think that this was a better finish than the Atlanta finish because it was unexpected, because it's at a track that doesn't necessarily produce these side-by-side -side photo finishes. Because of all the factors that went into this one, it was pretty freaking awesome. Even though this one was closer, I think Atlanta was better. Three wide and a guy like Suarez won. Yeah, Suarez winning was really cool for that one. Uh, Mayor winning this was pretty cool. He does He's not in victory lane every week or every other weekend. He rattles off a victory or two a year. Uh, so congratulations to him. Congratulations to Junior Motorsports. I would have liked to have seen Sieg win this. I think it would have made for a better story if Sieg would have won it, but still pretty damn cool. Great to see Elliott finally win again, but Texas still sucks. We don't need another mile and a half super speedway. Just reconfigure Texas back to what it was, a good, normal mile and a half track. I agree with you on this one. I still think that we need to put the 24 degrees of banking back in turns one and two and just repave this entire track. Don't reconfigure it. Don't add more banking. Just 24 degrees of banking back in one and two. Undo the weird experiment you guys did years ago and potentially produce a really, really good mile and a half racetrack. The current car with the current package produces phenomenal racing at mile and a half. We see it at Kansas. We see it at Homestead. We see it at, uh, well, kind of quad. Atlanta uh, and Charlotte, of course, as well. So I do think that that racing can return to Texas. Having uh, this race once a year on the calendar is probably for the best for now with Coda still on the calendar. So I like the idea of just putting it back to what it was basically when it opened in 97. Let's go back to what worked want to thank you guys for the comments. You can go ahead and leave anything from the world of NASCAR or motorsports in the comments down below for a chance for them to end up on the show. And while you're there, make sure that you mash that subscribe button so that you come back for the next video. And in between videos, you can always log on to ARNRace.com for the latest motorsports news. ARN, the Motorsports Authority. Now, Talladega this weekend, coming at you this Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern on Fox, the big boy. It's Talladega. Strap on in. It's going to be wild. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be very interesting to see what the plate tracks look like for these teams having gone from back-to-back -back, uh, restrictor plate drafting style tracks to now uh, Dega later on in the season. It's going to be interesting to see which teams have improved their packages, uh, which one of these drivers have kind of learned from their mistakes and everything that's happened in the first two races of 2024 and apply them to this race. It should be pretty fascinating. Who's a contender for the poll? Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and go with either a Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota 
or potentially a junior motorsport Chevy. These are the two t- organizations that have effectively dominated in the Cup Series, and I do think that they have a pretty good shot this weekend in the Xfinity Series at Talladega, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. We're going to be back on Friday. We have a lot of stuff happening this week. We're going out to Long Beach for the Grand Prix this weekend. Very excited for that. We're going to be getting you a uh, kind of video vlog highlight of that. We're going to be doing the show uh, from uh, the racetrack out in Long Beach on uh, Sunday afternoon for coming out on Monday, and we're going to have a show on Friday with some kind of teaser stuff uh, that uh, we shoot uh, this week out in Long Beach. So mash that subscribe button, come back for Shifting Gears on Friday. It's going to be a great show. Of course, Pit Pass will be back on Wednesday as well. So for everyone here at the Pit Pass, I'm Alan Bailey. We'll see you at the track.